Hello, lovely people. It is Tuesday. I think it's the 3rd of May. And uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, not that different. I'm not working on the next episode of that cover, although if I get far enough along on this other project, this other little thing we're going to do first, I'll go back to working on uh, the cover of the next collection. But we're starting off with drawing Waddle Bottom, the Lord of All Ducks from the Middle Age. And I'm going to be 3D sculpting him because I have plans. Well, schemes. I've got schemes. Uh, but uh, let's call them plans. It's less less unscrupulous sounding. But it is a lovely day here in Florida. I hope it is lovely wherever you are at. Uh, I'm sorry for the late start. I was trying to get uh, stream elements to even open. It was being very problematic. So I'm doing my usual. I'm starting in Procreate on an iPad. I set one layer to color, that nice blue layer, and I set this layer of, that's filled with white to a light opacity. And then I draw things under it and move things around, and that's kind of my starting point. For those who don't know, my name is Steve Conley. I'm a web cartoonist and have been for a very, very long time. And I write and draw the webcomic series The Middle Age, which can be read on Webtoons, Tapas, Go Comics. And on my own website, all sorts of links in the doobly-doo. And this is streaming to Twitch and to the YouTubes. Okay, let's get started. I have to draw Waddlebottom. Hey, Eric, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for my late start today. Uh, it really took a little while to get stream elements to behave. All right, so I'm not entirely, this is, the idea is that this will be a, we're going to sculpt this today. So I'm going to start with like what I assume will be a one inch base, similar to the previous models we've made and had printed. This is a little large. I'm currently scaling it down. Uh, I could show everyone a preview of it a little bit later on. It's, it's a little bit shorter. This figure is about 44 millimeters tall and I'm bringing it down to, it'll be about the sword will still be about, it'll be 37, and now it's, and it's not much, but it really is like a 10% reduction, and it's going to make it feel more appropriate alongside other miniatures. There's a huge range in size of miniatures, apparently, and uh, I just want these to be more comfortable and not, you know, if someone puts it in their middle of their D&D &D game, I don't want the characters to be elbowing everybody else. Hey, LJ, how are you? <laughs> I'm glad you're out and about, Eric. Uh, Eric on Twitch says there are four. There are only four other people here in the coffee shop, but they are extremely loud. <laughs> yeah, I. I was almost. A, I've got a free comic book day appearance coming up this weekend at Reister's in Reisterstown, Maryland. Cards, comics, and collectibles. It's my first flight since. No, it's not. It's certainly my first flight since uh, the mask mandate's been lifted. But um, it's a, a very early flight, so this week is going to be pretty rough. Uh, so I think the Thursday stream will end up being cut short a little bit. We're still going to go, we'll start at four, but it will probably end a little bit earlier than normal just because I've got to be, you know, at the airport at like 5 a.m. the next morning. I'm not exactly sure what pose Bottle Bottom's going to have, but I'm just trying to give it some basic. I mean, clearly this is way too big for the platform he's on. I really like having Bottle Bottom be a duck and not be too cartoony. It's, it's a fun contrast with the other characters in the story. I mean, I think that's... The more duck-like he is compared to how ridiculous everybody else is, like, it's almost like... Like, the duck is the is the sober one. The duck is the straight-edged one. I'm flying to a free comic book day appearance instead of being... Uh, it is it is unusual, uh, but it is a... I think I've done free comic book day at this shop for like 15 years. I was very local to it at the time, and uh, now I kind of... I think they don't want to break with tradition. 
I love the people there. They're very sweet. Wonderful, wonderful folks. And uh, I'm trying to think, what will Waddlebottom be doing? I kind of want him to have his wings out, very majestic. I want, to, you know, the more majestic he is, the more ridiculous this little duck is. I mean, he really is just a duck with a crown. So I want to have him on a perch of some kind. Maybe it's a fun tree branch or something. And then I can decorate the environment with all sorts of fun stuff. By the way, uh, anyone who's here on last week, Tuesday, um, Tuesday and Thursday of last week, we have a new soundtrack, a new two-hour playlist, which really ramps up at the end, uh, around the, the two-hour mark. And uh, I have not gone in and adjusted the volume of the individual tracks yet, so there's still that very bold musical number that comes in around the two-hour mark. So I apologize for that. I haven't had a chance to fix that yet. But there's a new episode of The Middle Age, which just got posted yesterday. The response has been spectacular. Um, the response over on Webtoons in particular, a lot of fun comments and lots of guesswork as to what's going on. So if you haven't checked out the latest episode, it is on my website and at Webtoons. It got posted. It got. It gets posted to Patreon and my own website and Go Comics. Usually the previous evening. Basically, as soon as it's done, and then I post it to Webtoons or Tapas at around. I don't know. Around six or seven o'clock, East Coast time, the evening of the next day. Maybe it should be just a stump that he's on. I was making the arms of this fake tree kind of interesting, but I think if it's a stump, then I can make the roots interesting, and that'll take care of a lot. Uh, definitely going forward with the Pencil to Pencil podcast, which uh, streams on YouTube and Facebook, and that's tomorrow evening. I believe it's going to be 8 p.m. to 10... 8... 8 or not 8 to 9 or 8 to 10 I think it's going to be 2 hours um, and it'll be myself Mike Manley who is a uh, Marvel and DC artist and also a newspaper artist and a heck of a painter too um, and Jamar Nicholas who's the creator of Leon the Extraordinary which is a new book coming out from Scholastic Graphics in fall of this year really exciting I'm gonna start working on a higher layer just to have add a little more contrast to all the scribbles I put underneath. Not sure why I'm working on the tree when I haven't figured out the duck yet, but I'm just following my muse at the moment. I also got was interviewed yesterday by a uh, fellow web cartoonist who is going to be doing interviews on their blog. Uh, on their YouTube channel, so as soon as that's available, I'll make sure to link to it, link to it for everybody. Did I say Wednesday? Yes, uh, tomorrow evening, uh, eight to I believe eight to ten, on the East Coast time, on the YouTube channel Pencil to Pencil. They have been recording interviews. They started recording inter interviews and started their channel during the pandemic. And they've got some wonderful interviews in there. Um, I've helped them with their logo and their graphics and things like that. Um, and I've known those two cartoonists for ages. So. Not sold on that tree just yet. I don't know if I want to have him... The more spindly I make his feet, like the, the really silly drawing would be to have, you know, Waddle Bottom on one leg, you know, one foot in the air, doing something crazy. But the model makers, the people who actually print the thing uh, or manufacture the models later, would just hate me. So I have to kind of have to think like the manufacturers a bit more. I was speaking with them about. Um, the figures for the middle age uh, again you can see them in the bottom right corner there 
Um, <laughs> LJ says on, on Twitch says Zen pose. And that would be very funny. Um, but uh, the figures you see in the bottom right corner there, uh, I've been working with a, uh, a manufacturer, a replicator, someone who will be able to um, create the masters and the molds and uh, produce copies of those. And the Quimp figure is extremely complicated. That's the hero of the story, and you'll see his figure pop up in a moment. It's He's very round. There he is. He's got the sword. He's got, you know, his pinky extended. He's got arrows and axes sticking out of his body. He's very much lunging forward. It's almost impossible to imagine the kind of clamshell mold that you could fill with plastic and then in any way extricate the figure from it. You know, it's basically going to create this barbed shape that you, you can't remove. So things like the sword and the hand holding the sword will likely be printed separately. And things like the arrows that are sticking out of the character will likely be uh, printed separately. And people who have these minis, they're used to assembling them, like some assembly required, especially the more complicated they are. But I'm hoping that uh, Jarn and Bob will require a lot less assembly. <laughs> yeah, the karate... <laughs> and LJ says on Twitch, uh, uh, the karate kid pose would be even better. I totally agree, but the model makers would hate me. I mean, the manufacturers. As, as a person who's actually going to be... So the plan is, I'll draw a nice version of Bob... I'm sorry, of Waddle Bottom that I like, and then we'll take this sketch over into Nomad Sculpt on the iPad, and we'll make a model out of it and see how far we can get. So I've reapplied for the Twitch. Man, it could be funny if he's just sort of sitting there flat-footed and his feet are up, you know? He's just sitting there with his belly. I'm not sure if sitting with his belly and his wings out makes any sense. It could be more of a Captain Morgan type pose. I mean, I kind of put that on all the characters. I mean, I like having that lunging figure. But these spindly legs, oof, I don't know if it would work. <laughs> Eric says, sweep the leg, sweep the leg. I mean, so many of these characters, what I want to do at some point is I want to have just like the bust of the character, where it's just, you know, the face and head and all the accoutrement and, you know, maybe with Quip, a sword sticking out of his chest. And then just having that as a single, like a nice sized figure bust. But I don't, for the for figures like this, I just have to be worried about how it will print. Uh, LJ says, I've worked and with and seen very complex undercut molds and jewelry design. Yeah, I think, I feel really comfortable with the people I'm talking with. They've done very complicated models in the past. I don't. I don't think their first thought necessary, necessarily is to, well, let's just slice the figure up and make people assemble it. Especially given how small, you talk about jewelry, I mean, especially given how small these things are. Um, so I don't know. I'm. They also, uh, the ones I've talked to have done some lovely work for other people. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit at their mercy, having not worked with them before. But... Um, they come highly recommended, so I'm, I'm excited, and I'll 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 share the steps and the process along the way. So as people, uh, so as the as these molds are being made and as these characters have come together, and they finally, you know, they become actual toys. That, not toys. They're not toys. This is not a toy. These miniatures become available to gamers and fans. That uh, I'm excited to share the process. So if other people want to do it, they they can learn how. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to pop over to Streamlabs for a moment and make sure that my my various overlays are overlaying. I kind of think I want to have... I, I do like the idea of having him just plop there. Sort of like when we first meet Waddle Bottom and he's just there in the tavern and he's just sitting on the table. A big inspiration for Waddle Bottom for me was the... Um, Feathers McGraw character from The Wrong Trousers, the Ardman animation, Wallace and Gromit. Uh, 
And uh, I always loved that there was a uh, bah, bah, bah. Okay, nothing, nothing spoilery there. Um, I just love that the character had very little animation to him, or to them, and they, uh, you know, it was just blinking, so there wasn't much to him. And, and I like that with Waddle Bottom as well. It's a lot of just tilting their head and, you know, reacting to things. I think when I drew them in the pub, they had a stein in front of them. I don't think I want to do that. So far, every character is... <laughs> I think every character is eating. Uh, at least... Uh, Quimp and Melvin are. I don't think I want to have a stein in his hand. Maybe the wings are out. It can't, you know, again, I'm trying to avoid right angles, always. Not sold on that yet. He never has a book. I would like to have a character who has a book in their hand, you know? Um... Jarn isn't eating. No, Jarn isn't, and neither is Bob. But uh, but Quimp and uh, I, I noticed I, I did Quimp, and he's got the cake in his hand, and then I did Melv when he's got a stein in his hand. I'm like, I gotta stop this. Um, oh, I was checking the dashboard of Streamlabs to make sure everything's cooking. But, um, so I haven't heard back yet from Twitch about reactivating my affiliate status. There was a story there, you know, I basically disc I was an affiliate for a little while, I ended it, I off-boarded, as the, as the kids say. And, uh... And, uh, have sent them a ticket to kind of re-onboard me, if, they, if they'll have me. I do think the model has to have the head at a little angle. I don't like the characters to have... A little tilt is a, is a, adds a lot of life. I don't like having the characters, you know, locked down. So the feet would flare out just a little bit. And I just have to make the wings. As much as I would love to just kind of tuck the wings down and just have the duck sitting there, as ridiculous as that is, that's not... <laughs> Maybe that's in character. But I want this to be special. And I found one of the keys is making sure that the eyes are not on the front, but each one is on the side, and that kind of makes it much more duck-like. So he'll have the collar, like a mallard, and then a slightly darker belly. Then haunches of sorts. <laughs> Coughing up the map. Well, the map could be a good prop to have. Um, hmm, I like that. I kind of have the map tucked into... You can't see it in the bottom corner there, but I've ac actually rolled up a bit of scroll uh, to and have it tucked into Quimp's belt. Um, I'm hoping the models will be able to see that. I hope the, uh, that will come out because... Uh, Quimp occasionally pulls out, like he pulls out the note from Phosphine. He pulls out um, the map. Uh, or at least he gets the map. I don't know if he's referenced it since. But I'm assuming he didn't just throw it away. I 
Okay, so him sitting with the wings up is kind of dumb. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't like it. He could, it just could be an action shot, like he's just waddling. But that would kind of put him on the ground, unless I put something, some obstacles on the ground that he's kind of hopping over. We get back into the problem of those little legs having to hold up the body. Um, yeah, and the idea that and LJ says on t uh, Twitch uh, that um, the map was an important part of Waddle Bottom's role so far, and yeah, that's absolutely true. But the just. Anything once he's on those little spindly legs, I worry about the model. I mean, I have—I just end up having to make them super thick so that the figure can stand. I could have looked at other what other people have done for. It wouldn't be that big a deal if this were actually a, a like a sculpture that was going to be in a park or something like that, because you would just run a steel pole. But since this is all usually uniform, this is all going to be like a uniform plastic, that would be the first place these things would snap. You know. Map as a third leg is a chance to... Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, okay, let's say I look at the previous sketch I did here. Let me create a new... Let's say he's sitting there. He's got the... <laughs> he's going to have props now. The feathers holding the map the map when one of the things I did if I, I can show people when we get to the nomad sculpt is uh, again quimp in the corner there at a certain size it was amazing that the 3d print when people did resin prints you could see the outline of the uh, of the of the crest on quimp's tabard but it was so subtle uh, what I did was I went in there and I flattened it out I flattened the front of the, cat, the tabard again, smoothed it out. I shouldn't say flattened because it's it's a round surface. So I smoothed out the outside edge, erasing the previous uh, logo that was there, and put in a much more uh, bas relief one, one that protrudes quite a bit further out, maybe twice or maybe three times the uh, distance. So it's not subtle, but I'm hoping that the plastic can pick up that. And so when you'd see uh, Quip's figure that the logo would appear properly. So, sitting on a stump. Maybe the whole figure is tilting sideways. It's a bigger stump. Maybe he does have a drink with him. It's weird to have this character with all these props in a game. Like, if you want to put it on the game, uh, like, <laughs> it's sort of like if I were making an orc, for instance, and I wanted to make the orc fun, and so they've got, like, an easel, and they've got, like, a little painting set, and a person wanted to put it on the board as, like, this kind of a this figure that you're supposed to attack. Meanwhile, it's painting. I mean, basically... A lot of these figures have to kind of ease their way into the narrative, like of whatever situation the figure is being placed in. And so I do feel weird that, uh, I mean, Melvin having a tankard and the staff is perfectly fine. He could cast spells. He could take another drink. I mean, he's an intoxomancer after all. Uh, Bob holding up a sign, again, kind of what he does. And Jarn, it's basically, he's just that's just the environment he's in. He doesn't have a prop. Quimp doesn't always have a slice of cake with him, but, you know, he's got pork chops in his boots. He's got, you know, he's a well, he's well, a well prepared adventurer. He, he's never without his rations. Um, his, his belt may be made of hardtack. Um, but I wonder about going too far with Waddle Bottom outside. Kind of an action pose. That's cute, but I'm, I'm going to hold that for a moment. Let's try one more. We'll start again. Using this stump to give the character some height. Because he's a very tiny character. What 
if he's just sitting there. That way he has the heavy base. A belly. Nope, 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 nope. I gotta do an action pose. I gotta do it. I'm just gonna make the legs so short. And I'm gonna make this craggy stump so craggy. Like, like it's been felled probably by one of the mighty blows that Waddle Bottom hit it with. Because he's so powerful. Incredibly powerful warrior. That maybe that will provide enough cover for me to to do what I need to do. But I had a lovely conversation yesterday with a podcast uh, with a cartoonist named Ash. Um, they have a webcomic called Dragon Riders Dance. And uh, I met them through the Facebook group, the Webcomic Creators Facebook group, which is actually a great resource for people um, the main administrator of it Charles has not been uh, uh, has been having Facebook problems like the trouble getting Facebook to recognize his account and um, but when he's active it, it's a really thrive uh, really vibrant little community without a lot of spam um, okay 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 I feel okay about where this is going basically let's put the wings out. Again, he's going to be very small. I will tilt the head still. Okay. We're getting there. Like, I wonder if this is just, just going back to what I had initially. But I give him little shoulders and then a big old water balloon of a belly one leg back the other leg Captain Morganing it or Rikering it I'm not sure either one is appropriate hey Marcus <laughs> I'm interested in seeing how I figure out how to sculpt the wings. I kind of think it's going to be that candy coating effect we did before, um, which is to uh, paint onto the shape, first, first create the shape, um, then paint onto it and then extrude those pieces out and that should I hope would be able to let me create feathers, like a, a progressive amount of depth so that these feathers would be the thinnest and then there's a layer of more so there's an increased depth and then increased depth again with this part being the thickest part right here this kind of shaded area now i want to have his eyes closed staring up majestically so this initial run of figures i think there's only going to be four of them to start it's going to be the four we've seen so far I've gotten initial quotes um, or estimations as to what the price might be. Uh, again, I have more work to do. I did a bunch of changes to Quimp's figure yesterday. I mentioned a little bit. But it also, I did something where at the bottom of the base, if we're looking at it underneath, it now has the middle age written on it, you know, embossed.
This seems ridiculous, so that's a good sign. Oh, if he brings his legs together, that does pro <laughs> It makes it dumber. Which, you know, speaks to me. Um, and then the stump, I can add moss and things to the stump that would, again, allow me to create more of a stable base for our hero. Again, 280, episode 280 of the Middle Age came out yesterday. And, um, or again, if you're on Patreon, late, late uh, Friday. I'm sorry, late, late Sunday. Um, the reactions on Webtoon have been fantastic. Uh, we, we learn, um, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but I'm assuming everyone here has read the latest. Um, well, we learned something about the king. Or not the king. We learned something about the person our hero's been talking to. Or at least we know what that person is saying. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how much readers will take the, the character's word for it, but um, okay, so but I'm, I'm the story's gotta wrap up. I can't continually pull the rug out from under people, but the conversation on Webtoon was very funny. Uh, with one person saying uh you know, the, the king says he's not the king, and the trick is he is the king. You know, like, like it was really going, you know, very Inception. There was a lot of, <laughs> everything's a trick. But then there was some people who said, oh, I knew it all along. And other people said, total surprise. And that's what I want. I want, that's exactly, the, the, the percentages are perfect. I want to get 20% of the people to go, I knew it. And, and the other people go, interesting and a few people to go my mind is blown so it's the percentages seem about right okay so that's the wing that's the other wing it's gonna have a short kind of elbow a happy face maybe the eyes are closed because that's sillier uh, I'm gonna do one more pass of this drawing just so there's less confusion. And then I'm going to import this into Nomad Sculpt and we're going to start building it. Uh, the king hasn't earned uh, LJ's trust yet. That is very fair. I think that's... I, I think I'm on the same page as a reader of it. I think I'm on the same page with you, LJ. Oh, I, I talked about these before as one of the inspirations for the sculptures that I do. Um, the models I really like are the ones from Weta Workshop. And I, I saw this was slightly on sale on on uh, uh, on Amazon. And it's Radagast the Brown from Weta Workshop. And they do a spectacular job. I mean, it's so much more... The process for creating these figures where individual pieces are clearly molded and painted and then assembled. It's far beyond what I'll be able to do with my minis, but uh, inspiring in terms of its... Uh... I'm not sure if the model holds up to the, the... On their website, you can see... If you go to Weta Workshop, uh, their mini epics line, you can see, I believe, some of the production models. And those have extremely crisp and colorful and perfect production like those are the showroom pieces and the 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 guides for which with which that were used to create those and uh those are you know assembly line stuff and less impressive but still there's a lot left in it i mean it was it was built in such a way that it was robust enough that anything that was lost in translation it was it still turned out great And talking about, uh, uh, LJ saying on Twitch about the latest episode where the king has revealed some stuff. That there's too many twists to suddenly take him at face value. Perfect. I think that's about right.
quite a bit more has to happen. What loose price range are the first four figures? Is it too early to know yet? No, um, I think the idea is I, I, I want to get the price down as low as I possibly could. And I quoted, I said, here's where we're aiming for. And they couldn't get there. They couldn't do it. Um, they, they told me where I could cut corners. I mean, it's possible I could do a version of Quimp that doesn't have all the stuff sticking out of them. You know, where they don't have to create a separate... Uh, sprue, as it's called, that would uh, have the arrows and the various bits and pieces sticking out of them. Um, so make the figure smaller, take the stuff out. Um, but then again, so much detail gets lost. Uh, one one beautiful bit of advice I got from one uh, group of gamers was that uh, you know my my mo the models are unique. The models are different than every you know. This doesn't look like what Games Workshop is doing or what. Reaper miniatures or Wizards of the Coast. You know, they look like my characters. They look silly. There's kind of a, a bounciness to them that's not, you know, it's not what people are looking for in their minis, necessarily. So, uh, if I'm going to do my own thing, if they're a little bit larger, isn't that fine? So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Uh, but the prices right now, I want to do Quimp as a standalone figure. So if people just want to get Quimp by himself, I think it would be like $20. Nope. Uh, no. Cat hair. Story of my life. Um, um, LJ says, I would rather pay more than lose your detail. Uh, yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, but I want to meet him. I wanted to meet the gamers halfway a bit. So I posted onto Patreon and onto the Discord channel. And I think I can share that link here with everybody. The Discord channel is called the Department of Cosmological Chicanery and Metaphysical what have you. And the Discord link is that. And I, did I, do, I need to do a version of that that's transparent. Have I done that? Oh no, it's got a white, oh, it is transparent, good. Um, so the price is currently going to look at looking at twenty dollars for the quimp figure by himself because again he's the most detailed one and it's got the most cost associated with it the other characters are cost are less so if people just but again if people just want our hero and i think a lot of people might just want quimp uh but if they want all four figures uh quimp jarn melvin the magnificent and uh bob uh, i think fifty dollars for all four figures so it's not like it's going to be 80 for four um but this that first main figure uh and i didn't want to make it so that if you want to get just one figure you had to shell out 50 bucks i just can't do that to people that just seems wrong um and then the idea being that if the campaign does well if we break some massive goal like twenty thousand dollars or something like that in the campaign which i don't expect again i'm this project, I've done Kickstarters before. They were, they were in the comics and webcomics section, and I feel like I know that crowd. This campaign would be over in the tabletop gaming section, who nobody there knows who I am. A whole new world. I'm excited to expose those folks to my webcomic. I hope people discover it and dig it. But um, because I don't know that world, everything I'm doing has got to be pared down and make sense with reasonable goals. <laughs> Jay Hunter says I'm in. Um, but uh, if we make if we break some large goal, I wanted to have this as an incentive. I want to make it so that, okay, if we get to this point, I'll go back to the manufacturer and say, what does it take to do one more figure 
and add and get Waddle Bottom added, and there'll be an additional cost associated with that. Like I'd say, okay, this character is now Waddle Bottom is now available as a standalone for fifteen bucks or something like that. Um, but it'll be the sort of thing that's like if we hit some goal, we can unlock it. It's. I also have other ideas for other stretch goals along the way. A lot of digital rewards, um, so that everybody who backs the project could get a digital download of the books of the Middle Age, which is good. Again, part of the goal for me is to get more readers. Um, but also, you know, there's a tier where you get the figures and you get signed co copies of my books. Or uh, at certain stretch goals, we get like a guide to uh, intoxicancy from from Elvwin. So if you play D and D or some other game, here's a here's a little here's a set of rules. If you two want to be an intoxicancer, you know, the peculiarities of that, you know. Magical Drunken Fighter. So, I think it's coming together. I feel like the plan works. I feel like the prices work. I feel like I'm not risking bankruptcy. <laughs> and the most important thing is that the campaign succeeds, so the goals have to be modest. Um, but mostly affordable. I just don't want to price anybody out. That's the worst part. I see some gaming books and they're coming out and they're like, oh, it's 70 bucks. I'm like, what am I, what? Stop that. Just stop that. You know, I'm, I know I'm old in that I have a, you know, everything should be a nickel. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm still that. I'm still that poor kid who found uh, themselves priced out of a lot of things, and I don't like. I don't like that concept. Some small digital bit that previews your next Kickstarter. Oh, that would be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah, I like the digital rewards. I like, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe collectible. Not co collectible is the wrong word because everything on Earth is collectible now. Um, uh, but something like, um, like a trading card that has the statistics if you wanted to so it's got a little additional artwork for sir quimp it has statistics if you want to introduce this figure into your dungeons and dragons game so you know that a level eight quimp has this strength and this armor class and what maledict of the woe blade is and if you want to have that in your little world and i think the fun thing about that is even if you're not a gamer i want to write them in a way so that you can enjoy them it's like i there was a uh Marvel, the Handbook of the Marvel Universe came out when I was a kid, and also DC had one called Who's Who, and it was they basically went through their catalog of characters and every one of them alphabetically, each character alphabetically got a page and it had silly stuff in it like you know, the character's weight and height you know the, the poor researchers and writers have had to look up all that stuff about, you know, how much does Thor weigh but uh it was also fun because it had history and had a little bit about their powers and a little bit about, you know, their first... I think it even included their first appearance, like where they're... And I got to write one of these for um, many years later. It wasn't in the original Who's Who, but I did one for Aquaman. And the, and the entire universe of Aquaman characters I did for for DC Comics. So it came out in 2004, maybe? Gosh, 20 years ago. Almost. Uh, but there was a... The, a, I think they call it Secret Files. And I did it for... I wrote it all for Aquaman. And, you know, the first appearance, the powers, the relationships, all the various characters. And I tried to write it in a way that... I wanted to write it in a way that people were like, okay, Aquaman's the coolest character ever. You know, um... It was before it was Jason Momoa. It was, it was still, you know, the blonde-haired... Um, he might have had a hook for a hand at that point in the story, in the, in the, the timeline. 
But the goal was to write it in a way, yes, it's, you know, stereo instructions, or yes, it's dry uh, encyclo encyclopedia entries, but write them in a way that's fun to read. And maybe shed some light on the characters. Maybe include some facts about Quimp that we don't already know. Or that I may have touched on, but, you know, never spelled out perfectly or clearly. Like I've mentioned his full name, Sir, what, Sir Quimpleton. Uh, the umpteenth of Grawlix. Uh, he might have some other titles in there, too. Yeah, okay. I'm not sold on this figure just yet. It's very stiff. So it's a good start, though. I mean, if we're making... If we're making these poor manufacturers print out those wings we can at least have them do something more interesting Were the action scenes where he, uh, he's, he's currently doing Saturday Night Fever? Not what I wanted. <laughs> um, there was the scene where Waddle Bottom, Lord of All Ducks, was fight was fighting a dragon, and so uh, I mean, maybe something in that vein, much more combat related, or okay, leaning forward. I do like the idea of having the kind of classic duck profile, you know, uh, there's a little pond by me and the new, the new hatchlings, the new little ducklings are out and I try to make a little bit of time every day to at least stare at them so I don't go insane. <laughs> LJ, um, that uh, LJ says uh, on Twitch that uh, they're stuck with their own lo on their own logo. I I, I feel that. <laughs> Waddle bottom with woe blade. Every time I do that, it suddenly looks like Saturday Night Fever. I gotta stop that. For those who don't know, Saturday Night Fever was a classic movie from the golden age of cinema. <laughs> and I'm old. Oh yeah, I did see that. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm I'm optimistic that the uh, that the feather textures will show up. I was more concerned about like if if they're going to be printing out the wings. That I certainly don't want things to be symmetrical. I don't want it to be you know as as. You know, I'm sure there's a statue somewhere in the duck capital where, you know, there's a duck and it's just the the arms are up in some sort of majestic pose, looking sky, you know, heavenward. You know, and that's like a 
as you enter the duck capital, there's a statue, a majestic statue like that. Um, I, I just, I don't think I want that on the figure though. It would, it would stand well though. Hey, Eric. Uh, I, I think Saturday Night Fever is mostly known for, as an inspiration for Airplane 2, I think. I think it was Airplane 2. Maybe it was Airplane. It was Airplane, wasn't it? With the Strikers drinking problem. What was I thinking trying to figure this out during the stream? But well, here I am. Uh, I really want those wings out. I don't want to... I mean, it's, it's much more naturalistic and much more reasonable to pull the wings in. Let me try it. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe. So I'm currently working in Procreate on an iPad Pro. And once I get this figure right, I will be starting in Nomad Sculpt and sculpting this figure. And hopefully I won't hate it. What are we doing? A lot of beeping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut down this thing so we don't have to hear so many beeps. Apologize for those. But the, the angle of the head should be a little bit off. The body... I kind of want to have it go the other way. So there's some more life to the whole thing. Alright, let me... Say it's crazier. The wings are going out, the figure's twisting. It's got two big drumstick legs. I thicken the legs up just so they can support weight. I do like this because it's silly, but I'm not sure if it solves many of my problems here. Oops. I saw that note, LJ. I kind of like the idea when the 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 
little duck butt kind of comes up a little bit. I think I don't think I'm gonna play that kind of like when they're when they're flying and they they sweep down. I mean this thing he's got to have a hinder in all this, otherwise I'm gonna be very disappointed. Sticking so the feet up. We don't want to go full Howard the Duck. You never want to go full Howard the Duck. And part of me wants the wings to be identical on both sides just for the sake of symmetry and oh I just finished one wing and I can flip it and I'll be done I did that with the baby dragons I think I have to simplify the wings a lot too, just to make them, just to make the model work. Again, I'm, I don't mind going off model from the webcomic in order to make the figure work. I wonder if something like that would work. E. Just trying to get a sense of what it would look like from the front. I'm gonna pull the leg out just because it's it's what Carl Barks would have done. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of liking this. Man, now I want to give him the classic superhero landing pose where his hands are like down here. Um, I don't like that. I mean, it's it's very squiggly, but it's got a lot of energy. I'm absolutely certain there's not another Dungeons and Dragons miniature anywhere in the cosmos in any fragment of any timeline that looks like this. I invite Doctor Strange to go looking for it, but I don't think it exists. I do like what I had before. I had like a bunch of moss on top of the stump. So those would be little sprigs. I'm not sure. I don't think those would print well. I can't do sprigs. I can't do little soft things like we did with the puff ball on the hat for that illustration. But what I can do is I want to have some flowers on here that are just laying flat like a garland or like a canopy. 
so it's not sticking out in all these directions and again making it a nightmare to print so I can still put some you know mushrooms and things on the ground and maybe have a few mushrooms kind of sticking out of the stump but I kind of like that I especially like this back sweeping arm so that means kind of the, the torso is kind of like that I'm gonna clean up some of this line work to hopefully show off what I'm going for here I also like the, the head on this angle. Yeah, that seems suitably ridiculous. I think I've earned a sip of coffee. I've never seen a classic duck superhero. Um, I was thinking mostly along the lines of Carl, not, not for this character, but like Carl Barks, and then Howard the Duck, or Jack Kirby to raise money. Who are they raising money for? I want to say it, maybe they were raising money for Kirby. Like uh, Steve Gerber did Destroyer Duck. Yeah, so I think Steve Gerber and I want to say Steve Gerber is also responsible for Thundar the Barbarian. I've recently been re-watching some of that. <laughs> Eric on Twitch is saying, uh, Lenil Yu always used to sneak Howard the Duck in the, the background of giant fight scenes with a gun. Um, that's great. But I was recently re-watching Thundar the Barbarian, which is pretty bad, but pretty great. Terrible, yes, but great. And uh, my favorite bit of it is how it starts. The year is 1994. <laughs> you know, the future. I'm cheating the perspective there because because I can uh, but terrible in an endearing way indeed indeed it was uh, very charming for its time a friend of mine pointed out like it was rare kind of rare for its time in that there wasn't like a toy line it wasn't an ad for a thing um, it was one of the last shows that was kind of just let's make something entertaining for kids it wasn't meant to move plastic figurines he says as he's modeling plastic figurines and uh Jack Kirby did the character designs. It was really strong stuff. I mean, the design-wise, there was some. There was quite a few strong bits. I mean, his fingerprints are all over that thing. There's just something about the corner of the the duck bill that kind of hints at a smile, which I've always liked. It just looks like a smile um, and makes the character a little more endearing. <laughs> LJ says, uh, "1994 feels like a past la lifetime." Yeah, I, I, I hear you. There's a, um, but watch Thundar. Make you feel young as though, as though the world were new. I'm trying to think of Carol Marcus's line from Star Trek 2. Okay, so we've got a duck leg here. It's got to be very, th it's got to be, He's got to have gams on him if this is if this model is to print. So I got to thicken those legs up. He's got haunches. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. I think it's dumb. That means 
We're all clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that's a dog outside. Oh no. There's a lady in my neighborhood. She walks her dog. And the dog has this collar. Like, it's a dog collar, but it's also like a, uh, like the cone of shame. But it's an inflatable one. So he's kind of wearing a neck pillow, the little dog. And it's a very little dog and a very large neck pillow. So it's, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it, I, also, it's good that he's on the mend. I don't want to. I'm not making fun of the little tyke's condition. It's just like um, the collar's amazingly ridiculous. Okay, so let's say there's moss and such on top of this, and the moss kind of comes down a little bit. I don't know if that'll be if that'll read as moss. I'm not sure. Um, but I could also chop up the top of the uh, the stump. So as if, as if the tree were felled and not simply cut by a power tool. Uh, poor dog. Yeah, yeah. The New York comes out with certain words: dog, draw, coffee. Can't help it. Okay, so we'll have some. I haven't made a good stump in the 3D modeling program yet, but I'm optimistic that we can do one. That'll look not awful. Okay, let's start here with the figure. And if I hate it, um, I'll undo it. I'll undo the whole thing. Make sure it's they're sweeping like there's some like there's movement in the whole thing. Um, I do like the idea of the profile, like everything about this is lunging forward. So these legs will be back, maybe everything will be pushed back. Now let's get into the program and we'll see if we can make any sense of this thing. Uh, where are we? Let me go to. Did I not have a gigantic? All right, we're gonna have. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna resize it and bring it over in the Nomad Sculpt. I'm gonna switch programs. I'll be right back. The iPad's all silly at the moment. So I hope everyone's having a lovely day. Uh, again, my name is Steve Conley. I'm a web cartoonist. Why, why can I not save this thing? There we go. Uh, you can read my web comic at middleagecomic.com. Um, axe cuts tear the wood in the opposite side. Thanks, LJ. Is what LJ says on the Twitch. If you haven't already uh, hit the follow button, please do. It will create a loud metallic sound, scaring the hell out of me. Um, I'm bringing the fig. I'm bringing the illustration into photos and cropping it there. It's just easier. And well, there we go. Done. We're gonna go back to Nomad Sculpt. We will create a new document. I can do that. I know how to do that. I right, bring in reference. Sweet. All right. James, how are you? Sorry about my gigantic head in the screen. Um, blah, blah, blah. Drawing with chat. Oh, and that's nice credit for Kevin McLeod and his lovely music again. So now we're over in Procreate. This is the simple sphere that the uh, each new document starts with, and that's our rough drawing of Waddle Bottom. I'm gonna reduce the brightness of Mr. Bottom. It's actually Mr. Waddle Bottom, but. Um, I'm going to start with the matte cap shading, the kind of chocolatey, you know, milk chocolatey color. Uh, and we're going to get rid of that initial sphere. And I'm just going to start with a new sphere. And 
save this as wattle bottom. And I hope this turns out good. I hope this is uh, this isn't awful. I'm optimistic. I'm going to increase the post subdivision. This this cre this changes as you can see rather dramatically how much uh, what kind of smoothness the sphere has and this is where I'm going to use as the starting point for Waddle Bottom's head and I'm going to create a duplicate of it for his body and start with those two spheres as our basic initial building blocks. Oh, oh, oh. I'm also going to see if I can import Sir Quimp. Hmm. Let me pause a moment. Let me bring in the uh, the platform. I think we have the one-inch platform. Oh, I don't want the one with no logo. I wanted the one with the logo. I can swap that out at the end. Um, tell you what, let's go back to my face for a moment here and see if I can save. If I can import the file over without breaking everything. Ah, let's go forward with what we have. Um, this one. This is the one-inch base that I was starting with. Let me save and show you what I've, what I've done with it so far. I'm going to open up the latest version of Quimp. Now this is him resized. I'm going to go to the view mode. I've changed the lighting. I've changed the material with which he's seen at. I'm going to get those num there's some numbers right up there. That's kind of useful for me to know how many facets we're dealing with because it really affects the file size. And when I'm bringing it over to the desktop to shrink down to send to vendors, I have to have a sense of I mean, how complicated have I made this thing? So, where, where are you? There we are. Stats. Send that away. So this is how the figure looks right now. Um, give, us a, give us a spin. And uh, what I've also a few things I've learned in the four months or three months or so that I've been using this program, and you've all been very supportive on the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I know how to fix the lights. So when the thing rotates, the lights don't move with it. So as this figure spins, you can see that the shadows are moving. Uh, the, the lights are fixed while the while the figure spins. Let me turn off the other little. Uh, where are you, minis? Then uh, I've also got that carved out of the bottom. So my webcomic gets a little bit of a shout out at the bottom of the figure. I hope that prints. The 3D printing, when it's done as a resin printer or as a filament printer, that will not fill in. I mean, that will fill, that will completely fill in unless they're going to build a thing on stilts, um, which I don't think they will. But for purposes of molding in a, in a, manufacturing sense they should be able to maintain that lettering so i was really happy with how the figure turned out you can see that the logo the the logo on the crest uh, the crest on the the tabard excuse me is far more pronounced like it's really sticking out quite a bit more uh, that should make it a lot easier for uh the printing process So fingers crossed the whole thing comes together very well. But uh, this tighter model also has cleaner details on the face. Um, there is some roughness in little places, but again, this figure is going to be so small that like the idea that there's some roughness to the edges of the bottom of his shirt, I'm okay with that. That's, called, that's all going to melt away. That's the, it's, the thing is so small. Uh, I was amazed that when I had it printed that those lines of the layers of the cake still were visible in some fashion. So, uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this whole thing came together. So, um, in the end, I'll put that same base on all the figures. And, uh, again, I really like the coloring of this. This really shows you, it gives you a sense of the plastic. Thanks, LJ. I'm glad you like it. Uh, illuminated art on Twitch says it looks great. So I, I appreciate that. Okay. Closing out of there. So knowing that that's where that's kind of the the scale at which we're dealing with this is now the master so everything else i make has got to fit 
scale wise size wise even tonally with this okay meanwhile back in waddle bottom okay thanks james okay so we have this platform again this is a one inch platform the notion is that when you're playing a DD &D game that the base of the figure is one inch around and that way at least a maximum there are some that other companies make that are irregular size uh, but they still don't want to be more than one inch across because the grid that people play on is one inch squares and so if you're moving your chess piece you want to keep it within the box so i'm starting with that same basic idea all the figures i've done i'll bring our little guys back here all those figures i've done in that corner uh have been created to that on that kind of size base and you can see even in that one where quimp is just spilling out the sides quimp when you see that figure come up again in the lower corner the cobblestone pattern that i put on the ground was very subtle I've increased it a little bit more, so hopefully it's got a little more. A little more. New blue images look great for kicks. Great for that. That's kind of what I was going for. There's a uh, D and D guru, a dungeon master guru named uh, Matt Colville. Uh, he has Twitch streams with like, he'll just sit and chat with people. And he has 700 people watching him. Uh, but his, his dungeon mastering videos have been up online for a decade, almost. And uh, very thoughtful. They, they just wrapped up a, like a $2 million Kickstarter for their new book. Um, but they... Uh, their minis on their website look fantastic. They have a it's a beautiful modeling to them. They don't have a their prices are higher than I would like. I, I don't want to get anywhere near that kind of pricing. It seems prohibitive. But it's possible if I were to do a full size phosphonet in relationship to these figures or any other large, large figure, the cost is gonna go gonna go up tremendously. It's just the nature of it, especially if you're going to have it detailed and large, like fangs and teeth and accoutrement and earrings and horns and all sorts of stuff. It just the price goes up very high. Like he's selling a mini. It's very large. It's like 80. It's for his current campaign. It's going to be like 80 bucks. Yeah, yeah. But the gaming world is different. They just have a different expectation. There's a book. Their campaign is to create a book that they've created maybe 10 pages of. And now that they have the money, they're going to hire writers and illustrators and play testers. And they're going to have a... It's like basically production starts on a $2 million thing. You know? It's not the same as... I feel like, okay, I got to I gotta front load all the sweat equity. I got to get the minis made. I got to get everything. I mean, I'm also proving myself, whereas he's got a 10-year track record in the gaming space. And so, I, you know, I know full well that when people go to my Kickstarter and I've got this really low goal, hopefully a very achievable goal, that people will be like, oh, I can get on board for that. You know? Especially given I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not a model maker. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of just, I'm joining this duck. I was about to say winging it, but... Um, so I start with creating, making sure that the figure stays centered in the universe on that center axis because that will give me the ability to do things like using the mirroring functions and the symmetry functions to build out the figure in a way that feels right. So I validate the sphere. I go to the front view. And I'm just going to use the drag tool with symmetry on in a modest intensity just to kind of build in where the shoulders might go and maybe the neck. I think the neck might have to be a separate thing that I build out. This is the left view. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that. I'm, going to, I'm not going to mess up this orb too much, this sphere. I just want to put the shoulders in and a hint of a back and...
That large red circle is the size of my brush right now. And I wanted the thing to be so large that it was like when it pulls, it should work like a magnet and just pull a whole section of the thing around. Hey, and those are the that little restream bit down there. Um, is uh, all about my webcomic. If you haven't checked it out, please do. And uh, if you're not following me here on Twitch, please consider giving me a follow. Um, LJ on Twitch, uh, Illuminated Art on Twitch says, large phosphonate figure, shallow, with platform areas to hold other figures. That's a nice idea. Yeah, I don't know how to... I, I think I have to... I think one of the positive sides of doing a large figure and having a large figure printed and then assembling it is that if you build it right the uh the pieces can work function like ball and socket joints so you might be able to uh, assemble your figure in a way that's unique for the way you want it i do like the idea that they could maybe hold platforms for other figures but that might be beyond my ability to i think if i if i really wanted to do that it uh, it's probably beyond my tiny brain. It's a nice idea, though. Oh, man, that's definitely the body of a duck, if I've ever seen one. Um, how am I going to... I'm going to use a drag tool? Let's try this. We'll go to the back of this thing and... Oh, not working. That's what I wanted right there. Bring this down and then grabbing just the end and lifting up. Should... This is the the tail end of our duck. No remesh, and then smooth things out a little bit. Uh, LJ says, "Okay, clear plexiglass or printed cardboard. I bet a game board manufacturer can do it." The trouble is, it's absolutely true. The trouble is, I'm still just such a indie creator right now. And when you get into with a lot of these manufacturers, the minimums you need are so high uh, that that's, I mean, that's where the real reason why I needed the Kickstarter. So it's possible something that is, is a legitimate thing to do. But also, at some point, I'm like, there's just too much to do. Like, next thing being a cardboard designer and being like a, you know, the, uh, the middle age webcomic empire needs to be quite a bit larger before I can start thinking in those terms, I think. But it's a cute idea. I like it a lot. I think I can imagine that quite a few people will DIY some very cool scenes with these characters. People with way more industriousness than my myself. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to clone the the sphere that is the head of the figure and let that grow out of the chest area and connect as a neck and have the two things kind of taper together. Maybe I need to be doing a, a, a lathe of this, but I think I'm going to stick with this. Middle age NFTs, Eric says. <laughs> oh, God. There are so many ways to support support my work i mean i guess if somebody there's just so many ways to support my work that aren't nfts i would hope that if someone truly wanted to support me they would have deduced the other methods that but i know there's a lot of creators out there who've done them and 
it's hard for me to begrudge any creator who wants to stay alive and feed their family uh, with those. I just... The vast majority of those people were already super popular to begin with. It's all the celebrity stuff. So even the artists seem to be celebrities. And then it... Uh, I like that. I think I like that. Um, they seem to be celebrities. And uh, so what are you really buying? You know. David, the great news, David says. Tell me. Hello, L Dragon Slammers. Tell me you're a partner. Yeah, I've been seeing these numbers on your channel. You've been you've been nominated for a Grammy, David. Tell me what it is. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm immediately now uh, skeptical of the next things that David says. Um, in the Middle Age comic empire. <laughs> And uh, David, that sounds fantastic. So David, um, uh, uh, Mr. David P on Twitch says that uh, that he's been contacted by a Mr. J Ramirez. If you're out there, Mr. Ramirez, that's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and he wants uh, David to contact him about some unclaimed funds. That's awesome. That's not the that's not the kind of opportunity that just happens every single day. <laughs> That's not the kind of good news that just lands in a person's mailbox every single day. Dave was like, great news. I'm like, I'm all excited for him. I'm like, oh, tell me, tell me the great news. You got it immediately. I'm <laughs> just mess with me. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I don't think you. I mean, David P on Twitch is saying that uh, that uh, they wouldn't just reach out if the funds were an insignificant amount. He emailed, which is the most professional way to reach out online. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you couldn't just screw with people like that. Who would do that? What kind of monster would do that? All right, so I'm gonna merge these two together. Voxel merge, not keeping the sharp edges, high resolution, because I'm at the stage of this where I don't care so much. I'm gonna smooth this out. Symmetry's on, so as I'm working on one side, it's affecting both sides of the figure. I'm gonna weigh, I'm gonna turn the intensity way up. That should smooth this area out quite a bit more. And then I'm going to remesh it. And that, again, does a lot to soften the whole surface for remeshing. Just uh, for smoothing, excuse me. If you're ever using Nomad Sculpt and for some reason the smoothing tool is not having the effect you want, try remeshing. That usually fixes it. David, that that is... That's great. Yeah, that, that is exciting news. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to work on the, the bill of the duck, which we have to use a weird... Uh, first, I want to save. I was working on something in this program the other day, and it got very complicated, and, the, and it just crashed on me. Um, we're going to use the triplanar tool. I know what you're saying. Triplanar, really? That's madness. Um, I think I can increase the smoothness. Let's turn that way up. Increase the division. I move this bar along, and the, you could just it the 
iPad stutters. It kind of like, are you sure? The more I increase this division, this topology, it's increasing the number of, I think the number of elements on each side that I can use for purposes of drawing a three-dimensional object. And we're going to go solo so not to have anything distract us. So the best way I can describe how this works is the object in the middle is created by the shadows it casts on the three surfaces to its side. So as I draw and change the drawing on each one of those three sides, that's the shadow being cast. The, 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 we're drawing the shadow and it's creating the object. <laughs> All right. Where am I? Who am I? Okay, we're going to use the selection mask tool. We're going to click the back. What, is this thing already rotated? Son of a... Okay, in the back button. Let's use... Let's turn off symmetry for the moment. We'll take the rectangle tool. We'll unmask. I'm going to draw to clear out that entire back shadow. So currently there's only two things projected creating the object in the middle. We're looking at it from the back. So I'm drawing the... I'm, we're creating the bill of the the duck so what could possibly go wrong we're gonna use the lasso tool and oh i'm gonna turn symmetry back on we're gonna oh, oh, oh no go back go back there we go symmetry's back on lasso tool and i'm gonna start drawing roughly in the middle of the shape Using the unmask tool and the lasso tool to smooth things out. That's interesting. I don't know what happened there, but I, but that's irrelevant at the moment. Anyway, so let's look at it from the left. Use the rectangle tool, unmasking, symmetry off. Maybe symmetry was having effect on other sides of the the object. I'll turn unmasking off. Now this is the profile of the thing. We're looking at the side of the, the duck bill. Um, so I'm going to use the lasso tool. I'm going to look at the bottom of the thing. Uh, <laughs> madness. Madness in the chat. Rectangle. Unmask. Let's clear out that. And using the lasso tool, let's use the polygon tool. Let's see if that creates a smoother shape that I can adjust on the other sides. Turning mask off, symmetry on. We're looking at the underneath of the bill right now. Hit the green button. Excellent. I get the left view. I kind of went, I drew that a little too short. So I'm going to clear it out. Selection mask tool, symmetry off, rectangle unmask. Let's just clear that out. Polygon tool. I 
And again, if this is very tall, the idea is once it's created and I've extruded it and uh, uh, validated it in the space, I can scale it and shrink it and add additional uh, modeling to it. But I'm just try trying to get the basic shape right now. So David, are you doing anything for free comic book day? I will be at Mark Nathan's shop once more. Didn't we just do that? We have to do it again. Son of a gun. I created that beautiful shape, but I had unmasked checked. That's all right. That's all right. Second chances are rare in life. This is a this is a wonderful opportunity that has been given to me. Is ridiculous. It's curving up there, which means this has to come down a little bit. So using selection mask tool and the lasso and mirroring is on. side view I need to bring that the front of it down just quite a bit how we doing Luke's lands yeah absolutely so I learned how to make 13 or 14 different objects on the way to making the thing I'm trying to make yeah hmm. that will come in handy if I ever need to make that it's also the right color which is funny oops One step forward. Nope, not that far. I'm clearly making this thing think too much. Okay, so using the polygon tool. Whoopsie. I want to use the lasso tool.
think it's a good start for this thing. All right, let's validate it and see if I can, can't mess it up further. <laughs> uh, uh, David says, um, say hello to Mark. I'll be at home reading all my comics for free. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I was promised a good joke. Uh, Heavens. All right, all right, all right. Um, let's go to the front of this thing. Using the trim tool and the lasso tool and symmetry on. Let's see if I can shave off a little more of the side here. Not too much. It shouldn't be indented, it should be smooth. So I'm gonna rotate it some more. Smooth little cut. Okay, I'm gonna remesh it. Get that way up, well, quite a bit higher. Keep sharp edges? No, I want this thing to be smooth. How are we doing? We got seven folks here. <laughs> you make me sad. <laughs> How are we doing on time? We're doing great. Not even six yet. But that means a very loud music is on its way. Let's remesh that again. That music reminds me of the Remo Williams soundtrack. I'm sure that's what everybody was thinking. Um, I'm gonna lift that up a bit. I think what I want to do is I also want to use clay to build up a slight ridge. Oh, we're digging in. I want to build a slight undo. Building a slight ridge on the top of the bill. Oops. So just a little bit of a climb up, a little bit of an incline there. Um, okay, turn off solo. Let's go to the front. Let's see if we can scale this bill down. Go to the left view, slide it over and slide it down. Scale out a little bit. 
<laughs> Redamdiculous. It's got to match the roundness of his face. I need to pull those sides in a smidge. need to bring those little kind of nostril bits that's what they're called in uh, ornithology uh, nostril bits or I could just build them up I'll build them up let's do that probably could have done all this with a disc just building up clay but no I had to go complicated let me remesh smooth clay will build up a little more Damn ridiculous. Okay. Let's let's call that bill. Top. Duplicate it. Go to the front and we'll rotate it. And see if we can turn that into the bottom build as well. Uh, we'll change our number to 180. That way it's perfectly even. Bring it down. Slide it back. <laughs> this looks so silly. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to fix that. It can't have those two. It can't be. Model Bottom's a young duck. You can't have that kind of. It's kind of. That wattling. He's not wattle bottom. See, David? That's a that's a joke right there. Come on. Nobody? Alright, fine. <laughs> how do I not how, how have I not reached partner status yet on Twitch with a joke like that? A stupid statement like that. A ridiculous non-joke like that. Okay, let's turn symmetry off. Let's uh buh -buh. what are we doing? It's a trim tool. With the lasso, we're gonna cut off the bottom of that. Oops. I'm gonna get the angle just right and trim off. Again, symmetry's on, so it'll affect both sides. I just want it to be, oop, turn solo on so our base is not in the way. Have I not selected anything? Bill Top, where are you? There you are. There's something about this doc this new document that I've created where my a lot of my angles are way off. But that was the part of the bill that was kind of hidden inside the shape of the head. So I'm just gonna chop that off I'm gonna slightly slice along the edge there to kind of help smooth that out now I'm gonna remesh it again that'll make it so I can buff everything out uh, what the heck I did that and I think symmetry was on let me turn symmetry off nope that's a miss. Apparently me cutting it created some weird hollows in the thing. So I'm just going to undo those. And remesh along the way. Hopefully one... Oh no, wow. Just remeshing it. One slice messed it up. So I'm going to go to the left view. Go to trim. Using the rectangle tool. No, let's use the... Yeah, use the rectangle tool. And try, try remeshing. Good. Nice and clean. Remesh again. And we're coming up on six. I'm going to take a little break here. And uh, I don't know if you noticed in the last stream that I've updated the uh, art gallery. Uh, Weird Hollows in Buff Bill's Family Friendly Horror Comic. Weird Hollows is Buff Bill's Family Friendly Horror Comic. I don't know that one. Hmm. 
Weird hollows. I don't. I do not. I've never heard that. Weird hollows. I need to get out more. Or stay in more. I would re well, do a Kickstarter. Let's make it real. <laughs> Have it funded by next week. It'll win an Eisner. It'll win. It'll win three Eisners. All right. I'm gonna add a little more clay just to give this make the bottom part of the bill. I can't, let me hide the disc, the the platform. I was all excited, David. Like, I really wanted a good comic recommendation. I'm going into Mark's shop and I'm going to pilfer. I'm going to pilfer, I say, and uh, demand that I be entertained with some new stuff. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. All right. Man, I'm gonna take my break, but I really wanna. I'm gonna just slightly give. The nice thing I've drawn this this duck character so many times, I'm kind of getting a, a better sense of the shape of a duck's head. Uh oh, this is my break. This is my break music. This is where it gets really loud. It's like that weird combat Planet of the Apes music. So let's take this break now. I'll be back in five minutes. Enjoy this very energetic uh, art show. I actually, you know, now that you say that, Weird Hollows, it, it's on my pull list. God, the music. <laughs> I'll see everyone in five.
Hello, lovely people. Credit below for Kevin McLeod and all the music. Again, here's a look at the um, the model that I've recently tweaked elements of. That will be one of the minis. You can see them in the bottom right corner there as well. But in this new version, the cobblestone's got a bit more relief to it. The figure itself has shrunk down a little bit to be more in line with the other D&D &D minis. Um, and uh, other things have been added, punched up in ways, like the logo on the front of the tabard has been brought out a bit more. I kind of had to smooth, buff out the whole front of the figure and then put in a new... I couldn't just extend the height of the previous um, uh, crest that was there. So I had to put a new one in and really bring it out. So it's hopefully we'll survive the molding process and we can see it. It looks great in the 3D prints, but I wonder about how it's going to turn out when it. they've got to make a mask, or then they've got to make a mold, and then they've got to make a print. And so it's kind of a third or fourth generation away from what we see here. And another bit was added was the uh, name of the comic and printed in the bottom of the pedestal. The little tile. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, this is the standard going forward for all the uh, other models I'm making uh, in terms of size and style and all that. But we're currently working on Waddle Bottom, the Lord of All Ducks. When we last left our hero, I was pinching in the tops of his head where I'm going to inset the eyes a little bit. It's got to be subtle. Too much and it looks weird. Also, uh, Lord Waddlebottom kindly gave me license to use his likeness in the comic, and I have to... All this stuff has to get approved by his people. Okay, so we're going to add... Uh, I might want to do an indentation for the... like a, I'm, Let's do that. I'm going to create a socket for his eyes. So we're gonna we're gonna create little eye sockets. We're gonna use the clay tool. We're gonna subtract nice small brush with symmetry on. And our spheres will sit in these. And I'm hoping that the indentation of the socket will help provide uh, a visible uh, outline when they're assembled. Um, <laughs> so so um word on the street is that david uh david l peterson and david l peterson productions i don't know what your middle initial is david but let's, let's say david l peterson uh and their productions have recently acquired the rights to reprint for the first time in america uh weird hollow which is an acclaimed comic series, which I, I, it stuns me that it, the rights were ever available, that they even could be acquired. But uh, apparently David's working on bringing a translation to American audiences, which is exciting. Evil duck. Gotta watch out for that. Gotta watch out for the expression. I'm gonna make the the eyes a little tall.
I think the eyes are too high, and I think the bill is a little too low. <laughs> David, if you could get the weird, <laughs> weird Hollows movie, uh, the domain. All right, let me um, before I go too far, let me. This program is amazing because it has it offers me a thousand levels of undo, um, because it it speaks to me. So much better. Oh. <laughs> this is so silly. I want to hollow it out in a way to give the eyes just a little bit of a sympathetic line. Sphere. So the plan is now to have the Kickstarter for the four minis. Um, I will to let everybody know when that's happening. And then again, in, then if we exceed a stretch goal, then I will work with the manufacturer about making an additional figure and making that available. And that figure will be Lord Waddlebottom. I'm still working on the Phosphonate character, but I think that will be for like another set of figures in the future. I, think I should still be lower. Lower still. No, I like it, I think. I think I need to smooth out the... I need to smooth that out a bit more. Too high still. It might be too high still. Or I can just stretch the top of his head and cheat and bring the bill up using the gizmo tool. And taper this the head shape into the body which I have to do anyway how we do it I'm gonna I'm going to smooth this out by adding additional material and then sm smoothing it out further. We'll remesh. This is ridiculous. Thank you all for being here. Um, unfamiliar with my comic and you probably are this is Lord Waddlebottom Lord of all ducks my webcomic is called the middle age and 
He is one of our heroes in the story. just gonna be a cylinder I'm gonna make the crown easy enough bring it to the front and we're done I should have given him a fez we're gonna hollow it out we're gonna click the radius so we can change the radius at the top so it's it opens up a little bit as it gets as it sticks out um, that's probably thick for the width of the thing, but since this has to print, I don't care so much. Uh, I do want it to have just enough thinness that I can cut out the shapes and it doesn't look weird. So I'm increasing the division. This division effect in Nomad Sculpt affects how chunky and how stair-steppy the cylinder is so I turn the division up until it looks visually smooth to me again it doesn't really it's a mini it's not gonna be that large it's not that important but um, you know even if you could see the lines when it prints it wouldn't matter <laughs> this is an extra stretch goal that's how I get you be sure to pick up the Fez action pack like the Fez accessory kit. Um, oh, I'm trying to grab that arrow. I want to make sure the crown works on its own as a separate object, and then put it on the on the duck's head. I think that'll make it make more sense. How dare I? It'll make the duck crown will make more sense. Um, okay, so I'll validate that shape. I feel like that's a good starting point for our crown. And I did this before when I was creating Bob, Bob's Rough by, I created a number of shapes and then I notched them out of the other shape. And I'm going to do that with the crown. I'm going to create a number of rectangles, another, I'm sorry, like, like a bunch of two by fours, rotate them 45 degrees so that the point of the two by four, four is pointing south, straight down duplicate that a number of times until I've created this kind of fan shape and then extract that from the top of this uh, crown shape and that will give us what we want one would hope nope okay. let's see okay so we create a box I'm going to recenter the crown in the universe. That way, I'm certain everything will be centered. Oops, I don't mean to shrink it. We'll stretch this out. Scale it down a little bit. Stretch it out some more. Look at it from the front. From the front. I'm going to hide my reference material for a moment. Rotate it roughly 45 degrees, and then go into the math and get that number absolutely correct turn off local movement local his crown has a point at the top so if I create this I can always rotate the crown later on What is going on there? I'm scaling it and it seems to snap right out. I wonder why. Oh, I haven't validated it yet. Excuse me. Okay. top we're going to duplicate our box rotate it 90 ish degrees wow 
There's a lot of... Affecting on a lot of axes. It doesn't seem to me, if you notice in the bottom, oh, it's covered by the figures, but it doesn't, it, it seems to not want to, I can type in 90 degrees and it sticks with 89. So this whole program is fairly, um, it's, what, what, how would I describe it? It is imprecise. How about that? It's great, but imprecise. There yet. I think it has too many segments. I think I have to simplify it. It looks fine. Hey kids, choking hazards. Okay, let's fix that. It is not made of rooster crow, uh, rooster combs. No, but uh, that's definitely. An, I, think, I think I mentioned it earlier. That's definitely an inspiration. Feathers McGraw is absolutely an inspiration for uh, uh, how at least some of the scenes were waddle bottoms. There, it's just he. Uh, there's an animation by Ardman called uh, "The Wrong Trousers" featuring Wallace and Gromit, and it's brilliant. It's the funniest damn thing, and. Uh, Cannot say enough good things about it. There is a, uh... Penguin in it? Who's not a penguin? No spoilers. No spoilers. I wonder if that would work. If that's going to be too much. Let's find out, shall we? Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Instead of just going straight for the 90 degree angle, I'm just going to do... I'm going to do a different mathematical... Different angle, different angle. Right, okay. Oops. Got to make sure I got to keep sharp edges, otherwise the, the corners will just immediately degrade. Okay, so we'll duplicate the, this. Look at it from the top. 
and instead of rotating it 90 and then 45 Oops. Dang that. The math on this thing is just all kinds of bonkers. Duplicate that again. Let's get sixty, negative sixty. See if that works. Oh no, it, it is not working. I hate how I can't just type in move it 30 degrees, rotate it 30 degrees. Uh, James says, cranial accessory pack. Melvin's hat, the hat of bad deals, the crown of all ducks, king's crown, dragon's crown, niddle's crown of feathers, of uh, flowers, excuse me. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right, let's just, uh, we'll, we'll eyeball it and hope for the best. See, if I do 30, it's just going to end up with the exact same thing. Because if I do 45, what I want to do is I want to go 60. And then duplicate that again. And go another 60. Roughly like that. Let's merge those together. And see if we get an E-Trade sponsorship. Uh, not the intended effect whatsoever. Something is amiss. Oh, they're not centered properly, I don't think. It's not centered properly. There we go. Right, getting there. Sweet. I think we have it. I think we have it. Fantastic. Okay.
I'm going to leave it centered in the universe where it is because I want to add the gems around the sides of it. And uh, let me hide the rest of our hero. So I love the reactions to the latest episode. Episode 280 of The Middle Age was posted uh, to most websites yesterday. It was uh, to my Patreon and my on my own website on Sunday night. And um, the reactions and the theorizing, all fantastic. It's, it's, it's having so much fun. What I do like is that in the latest episode, the king made a revelation, no spoilers. But immediately a bunch of readers on Webtoons were just promoting Bob. Like, you know, that Bob must be clearly, the character Bob must be king or something like that. Um, many theories. It was fantastic. Oh, thanks, LJ. Thanks, James. Uh, but many, many theories. Emperor Bob. Uh-huh. I think you might have been the pers first person to put, uh, uh, given him that name. But uh, there's a lot of suggestions about King Bob. Okay, we've done gems before uh, for some of the magic items we built. I'm going to make this simple. It's going to be a simple gem with a simple... Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? A setting around it. Uh, again, it's because this is all plastic, it's going to be, uh, you know, I, I can't play with uh, translucency to kind of sell the notion that it's a gem. So we will start with a box. We'll hide the... We'll hide the crown. Validate it. We're just going to carve into it as we had in the past. There was some other cheating we did to help mold the box the way I'd want to. Hmm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> what, the thing about when I did it before for the illustration, it could be imperfect because it was going to be watercolor effects and I was going to go in with a pen and, you know, the, the pencil tool inside procreate and sketch extra little bits of this and that on top of it this is going to be mathematically you know printed um i don't want and i i lj believe me my first thought was i've already done this before i don't need to do this again and i'm like no i've only done four models i can't recycle just yet i mean i know i did the magic items and stuff like that but i feel like i've only been using this program for three months maybe I don't, uh, maybe five months now. Um, it still seems too soon for me to just have a stock library of, <laughs> of things. Um, I'll get there, but I, I don't want to start there just yet. But I, I like where you're, I like what you were thinking. Like, yeah. Okay. So first step will be to create another box. Um, turn that and validate that. Turn that invisible. Look at the other one. Duplicate it. Rotate it. 90 degrees ish. Or 45, excuse me. This is how we did it before, and I like the effect.
So I use one shape, rotate it, hollow it out, and use that as an extraction on all sides. Uh, no facets. Okay, I'm not sure what that's refer referencing to. Um, oh, right, there was two ways of going about this. The way I end up settling on it was not to start with this shape. No, no, I could do it this way. Um, that's why it's nice and tall. That's right. Uh, as long as symmetry is on and we use the line tool and we basically make sure that it goes through... Oops. That was me messing with the camera view instead of rotating the thing. Wait, 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 we got that side. How's our rotation? Zero, zero, zero. Excellent. I'm hoping that's not going to mess everything up. Let's use the trim tool. Take the object, we will rotate it until it's flat on that side. What is that? 44? Let's say 45 degrees. We'll take the trim tool again. Oh, see, re I'm going to remesh, keeping things sharp. What happened in the past was I wouldn't use the remesh tool, and suddenly as I'm slicing away at this thing, it just starts to shatter. So remeshing kind of gives it a, uh, a bit of a fresh start. Okay, let's grab that trim tool again. I'm not sure if symmetry is a bad idea. Let's find out. Symmetry might be messing me up right now. But. Uh, check the rotation again. We're at 90. Perfect. A lucky guess. from the side view the bottom view and trim tool with a re rectangle Let's see what we've done Let's see what horrors we've done oh, I kind of sort of like it it's fun if I turn it on an angle I don't hate that no it's it's all it's all garbled how can I do that in a way that prevents that that mathematically allows us to do this oh i'll put us i'll put a cube in place and then i'll rotate the object and always cut with the exact same cube that way it's all math and it's not me having to think about anything or free you know freehand cutting a cube in half and if someone said that in chat do you already have a shape established on the book for his gems kind of sorta i've played it fast and loose as i've worked on it um, I see we got 10 people on Twitch. Hello, humans of the planet Earth. My name is Steve Conley. I'm a web cartoonist, and I write and draw the webcomic called The Middle Age, and I'm currently working on Waddlebottom, the Lord of All Ducks. We're working on his crown, which has these little gems in it, which are incredibly tiny, so the idea that I'm working all, spending all this time trying to make the facets just right is really stupid, but welcome to my channel. <laughs> uh... I hope you're having a lovely day. Please, uh, if you if you if you like slash understand anything that's happening on my channel, please hit the follow button. Um, because I need the validation. <laughs> Hi, my name's Steve Conley. Welcome to my cry for help. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, now the angle doesn't matter since I'm going to use it because since I'm using math. They just have to intersect at some point. So if I rotate this, zero, 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 that number goes up. Perfect. Okay, okay, okay. This should work. I might have to re I might have to duplicate this box many times. When has that stopped us? Oh, 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 oh. I won't duplicate it just yet. I'm going to validate it first. Okay. Now, I'm going to... There's no point in naming it. Every time you intersect objects or join them together, they take the name of the next thing. So there's no point in me renaming pieces right now. Um, so I'm going to duplicate the box. I'm going to select our main shape and the second shape. Voxel merge. Resolution up. Keep sharp edges, voxel merge. So that's our first cut. Using that, using the box as a guide. So sweet. So far, so good. Uh, also, when you merge things or voxel blah 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 or remesh, it always puts it at the bottom of your laundry list of objects. Those layers, those, those are not layers in the scene. Those are just objects in the scene, and. Uh, the thing you remeshed or merged is always at the bottom. Uh, okay. Turn that box back on. We're going to rotate this. We're going to have to do it all eight sides. Oh, math. Oh, no. Why are you doing that? Its rotation changed. Its numbers changed a bit when I did this. Okay. Well, we can, we can eyeball it a little bit. Let's hit 45 here and see if it does anything. It hasn't seemed to mess up its perspective. We'll duplicate our box again to the bottom. We'll select our gem. Turn that thing invisible. Hide the other one. Box will merge. Turn our box back on. Duplicate it. Turn the original one off. Select our gem or rotate it. Take that to 90 degrees. Selecting the new box, turning it invisible, voxel merging, slicing it. Are we all, all, all slices? Our slices are not in even places along the side. There's something amiss. Oh, oh, oh. Our center gem is not, our gem is not rotating around a central axis point. It's rotating off center. That's that's your problem right there. I don't need to cut it just yet, do I? Okay, the theory's the theory's solid. Uh, the theory is solid. Simple merge, delete. Let's just. This is the part where I yell back to formula, and I turn bright green, and I get angry at everyone. <laughs> okay. So it's a cube. I've stretched it tight. No big whoop. But we know that this cube I just created, when you create a new object, it's centered in the universe. And so I'm going to use that to my advantage. Then I'm going to duplicate the box. Rotate it. Move it up. Slide it over. Actually, I'm going to enlarge it. We only care about where it's intersecting. Man, having the 45 degree angle really helped. What if? Oh. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. If you were yelling at the screen, I understand. box slide the box slide rotate a bit slide it up slide it over mirror
Validate. Duplicate. Exterminate. Oh wait, no, I gotta, I gotta validate these things together. No, I cannot. It's treating the central point of the object. Turn symmetry off. Good, that's what it was. Having the symmetry button on was still treating this thing the way I did not want it to be treated. Rotate that 45 degrees. Or, I'm sorry, 90 degrees. Duplicate that again. Turn off symmetry. Rotate. Dip. Rotate that 45 degrees. Duplicate that one more time. So like a negative 135 degrees. those I had keep sharp edges but it didn't seem to take that very seriously hmm. I really ramped up the uh, I guess I could cut each one individually oh I'm so sorry um, there's some comment do you already have a shape established in the oh uh, and then gas <laughs> uh, I'm I'm learning I'm learning uh, turn off symmetry. Oh, oh, you know what? I bet you that was my... That's your problem there. You got your symmetry on. I bet that was confusing everything. Symmetry, when you don't want it, is just... Confuses this dang thing. No, it still... Created a weird... Really like those lines to be sharp. So we got our top shape. We've done this before. Uh, we will go to this front view. We will duplicate it. We will stretch the thing out, slide it up. We're going to create our counter. Basically, the, the thing which will zero, 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 good. I'm going to rotate it 45. And then. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to trim this off so it's like a lot easier for me to see what I'm doing. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. No, wait, not split. Trim. There we go. With the, with the rectangle tool, I'm going to cut off everything after that. Gizmo tool. Hmm. Oh, I'm also, I got a little bit of the top thing there. I'm going to separate them. That's why it was the center point of my uh, object was not where I expected it to be. So now I just need a larger box that I'm going to create. I'm going to add around the thing. And we're going to create a die to cut our shape. Mm 
Now using that as a guide, I'm going to select the box, turn that invisible, box will merge. And blow up my computer. No, I didn't blow up my computer. Fantastic. And now I can just trim off the top of that. Let me save before I blow up my computer. How are we doing? We saw 10 people on Twitch. Hello. Uh, folks, hit the follow button. Whatever else. I'm sorry, the subscribe button's not available. That's my fault. Uh, I'm going to trim off the top of this. Oh, my goodness. Trim off the top of this object. Using the rectangle, turning off symmetry. And now we have a gem. Was that so difficult? <laughs> yes. But I've learned. I can just create the opposite opposite shape as a thing and then stamp it out. And that's what I should have done. I might have learned that after one of my previous models, but, you know, my brain is very small. Um, great. So now I can use this to create the setting around the gem. By duplicate looking at it from the front duplicating it let's call this gem Oop, not germ we'll duplicate that we'll call it setting we will enlarge it a bit then we will trim using the rectangle tool We can expand it a bit because, again, this will be very small, so having any additional uh, size to this thing is going to help it read, and it, and it will need it. Okay, let's turn our other objects back on. Voot. Well, let's not do all of them. I kind of got ahead of myself there. Let's just have our crown. Gem and setting. We will slide out. We'll look at it from the left. We will rotate it. Oops. The other way. Check our math. 90 degrees. Heavens. Gotta select both. Huh, why wouldn't they move together? It's being challenging. Well, I can undo, undo. I'm going to simple merge them together. So hopefully when I rotate them, even if I have to separate them, and I will separate them in a moment. Um, I was noticing that one piece wasn't moving for some reason. I'm going to trim the thing down a bit. Uh, ba -ba solo shows us just the things that are selected. I'm going to separate this into the setting again. And I'm going to use the trim tool, turn off symmetry, keep the rectangle, use the rectangle tool and just slice. And again, turning off symmetry, slice again. Typing the first letter too quickly and I lose it every time. Okay, let's turn on the solo off. Left view, let's rotate it just a little bit. Let's see, raise it up. Okay, so that's one gem. What? I don't know if the crown is centered in the universe. It is. Excellent. That's what I needed to see. Oh, and that uh, spam below is who I am. If you want to read my comic, those are the deets. As the kids used to say. Uh, 
I want this to be easy. So... I'll take the crown. We'll rotate them both. Can I rotate them both? I should be able to rotate them both. Oh, it's 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 no longer by grabbing both of them. It's not set. It's not rotating them around the center of the universe. It's rotating them around the crown, but the, the 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 new center of the two grouped elements. It seems to be anyway. Okay, so let's just select the crown. Good. I don't need to do that. Let me just select the gem. Rotate that. Oh, that's my fault for making this sixty degrees instead of ninety. Moot. It's all moot. Okay, we're gonna have to eyeball it. Kinda. Oh no, there's some logic to this. Okay. How's our math? Excellent. Okay, we're going to merge our gems together now. Simple merge. Nothing too fancy. And we'll duplicate them again. I'm hoping they're centered on each other and centered in the universe. So we'll just give this a shot and see. Not exactly. Or it could have been that I had messed up the geometry when I first created the crown, which is quite likely since the crown was really me just eyeballing it. Those crowns are, those gems are super prominent right now. They're probably too prominent. Let's undo until I just have one gem again and shrink down that front gem a bit oh the gem only has one part now fair enough Trim. Sweet. That'll work. Okay. I know I wanted it to be a little chunky, but that was too much. Simple merge them together. Looking at it from the top, I will duplicate it and rotate it until it's roughly centered on those those points of the crown, and I'll do it the same. Do it again.
This is very ridiculous. Alright, let's go to view mode. Let's save, and I think I've earned a sip of coffee. I think for the feathers and like the collar, where it's a different color, I've got to color that in. Like I've got to scrape that into the shape. I've got to, it really has to be sculpted. So I'm going to have to create a feather texture. The thing can't be smooth. Bah. But so far so good. I like the, uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Who wouldn't want this D&D mini at their table? A ferocious beast like this. I think the crown could be taller, and I don't mind... I don't oh, Let's do this. Let's separate it. Select. The thing is, everything's called gem now, because, you know, once you merge something, like I said, it's all... Let's scale that up. Scooch that up and remesh and bring them back together again as a simple merge. Actually, undo, undo. I, I brought the crown into the into the skull a little bit, and now that when I re when I simple merge them again, now I can raise the whole thing and give the whole crown a little more height. Just a little bit. Stamp? I think so, LJ. I think there will be a feathery... St I think I'm going to try that with a feathery stamp. Although, it can be tricky to use correctly. Although, I've gotten a lot better at it. A chunky lord. <laughs> Indeed. Alright. I still don't have these uh, eyes validated. I'm sorry about that. Sorry that, my lord. My lord. The crown could be a little bigger, too. That is a choking hazard. I'm sorry, children of the world. This is not a toy. Let me cheat with... I don't even know what lighting we have in this, situ in this one yet. Uh, but I will add some post-processing, which gives us a little bit of extra shadow. But it's all fakery. I want to get real shadows in here. Let's get real. So we'll go into lighting. Go to PBR. Add a light. Try to select the light. Get it. Oh, 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 that's not the light. That's the light. Oh, that's the light. Just get it out of the frame so it's not so in my way. It's currently not casting any shadows. I would have liked a couple of shadows. All right. Let's go back to matte cap. It's easier to see some stuff. Okay, okay, okay. This whole thing is very ridiculous. Select all of it and increase it slightly. We're gonna need legs. We're gonna move the body in a way to give it a bit more. The whole thing's gonna to have to have more life to it than it currently has. But I want the wings to come out. I will design one and try to flip it and see if I can get lazy and only do the one. could carve it out of a block or I could attempt to oh what I did with the dragon wings is I created a sphere and did my that candy coating effect where the whole thing gets 
you basically paint the shape onto the side of a sphere and then extrude it out of the sphere and that lets your object have a bit more of a uh, a roundish quality that's not inherent in any of the other raw device raw uh, objects you might introduce into the world the sur you could try to bend uh, a box into the shape you want but getting that sphere right and drawing on the sphere seems to be at least for me the best way to do it um, so the, the limb is out but let's assume it's we're treating it like a hand in some way it has to bend down for it to stay wing-like. But the hand would face the other direction. But would still have a bit of a bend in. It wouldn't flare out. It would, f it would always have an inward trajectory. Or some such. Let's see if we can get this to work. Turn off the base. I'm going to use the, the body of the, the duck as a guide for what I think I might be doing. Actually extends up past his head, but let's say I create it at a regular angle and then I skew it up. Let's say that. I have no idea if this will work. All right, so we want the ba ba ba. Want to validate our shape? We want to up our resolution a lot. We'll worry about it not being oversized for printing later. Get the so selection mask tool we can start with uh yeah let's try that we're going to start with using the ge geometric tools for drawing the wing on the side of the sphere and see if this is giving us anything close to what we want using the polygon Heavens, I hate that so much. And I'm not sure if it's the right approach to attempt to draw these wings in place just yet. I think it might be better to to create the shape and then carve out the wings later on. That way you can give the individual kind of feathers a bit more a bit more flavor, kind of a little more life to them like they've got a little they're not these will come across. I mean, yes, they're going to be on a circle, but they're still going to feel rigid and I don't want the I don't want the figure to feel that way okay 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 not the worst yet. Let's see what happens if I extrude this out. What do we get? Nice shell thickness. Chonky. Could be chonkier. We got the other side of the circle. Unintended. But maybe we can make some use of that. Uh, separate. 
Let's hide our sphere, which we do not need. We have some extra meshes here. Like the, just the edge of that. We're going to trash it. hide that other mesh. Oop, hid the wrong one. So let me before I would let me increase the mesh a bit. I'm not gonna bother trying to keep sharp edges or anything like that. I just want to soften this whole thing right now. For those joining me, I'm working in Nomad Sculpt on an iPad Pro. I'm a cartoonist. You can read my webcomic, The Middle Age, at middleagecomic.com and on Webtoons and Tapas. But I have been experimenting with some 3D models. You see some of them in the bottom right corner there. Um, using the lasso tool, turning off symmetry. Yeah, I think I want to cut this out of a flat shape. That way the shape, they, they don't feel like weirdly inflated. I want them to feel like individual feathers, you know, flaring out. But I want to experiment a little bit more with this thing. Okay, we've got the shape. Use the gizmo tool to rotate it into space. Rotate it out a bit. Bring it, bring it down. I do like the curvature of it. I do like that it has a hollow. Like he like he could take off if he wanted to. Use the move tool. I think if I carve it out myself, it'll have fewer problems. Or I gotta go in there and draw it manually. I can always do that. Although, I do think the depth is gonna have a problem whenever I try to smooth out the edges. Like, I want it to taper into nothing. I want to taper into, you know, nobody wants to print that. But, uh... Okay, that was good to learn. Delete, delete get our sphere back nice thing about this is because it's on the sphere already it does it does you know it's it's super easy for me to extrude another one uh, but i don't want to do that just yet i'm going to turn i'm going to get the selection mask on with the polygon tool selected I'm going to use the unmask tool. You know, basically it's a different setting to remove stuff I didn't want to select. The trouble is, you see the stair stepping in the shading there, so it goes from like solid color, solid shade to nothing, and it's when I extrude that that each one of those stair steps is becoming a like a little cliff, a tiny little bit of corrugation along the edges of the selection, which is not great. Is there yet another selection under there? There is. Look at you. Look at you down there. Okay. Let's try extruding that. Let's see what that does. Turn the sphere off. Still the stair stepping, we knew that. Turn off symmetry. It was reacting too much, like I need to increase the res and then bring the power of that smoothing down a little bit and use a slightly smaller brush so I can smooth the edges without completely obliterating the shape. Like you could just see it was melting before, like I 
like a candle being hit with, hit with a heat gun. It was just, just falling apart. I didn't want that to happen. So I'll do a quick pass with a not so heavy brush to smooth out the edges of the wing. It was painted more depth as I need it. This looks a lot like a duck trap. <laughs> Absolutely, James. James is saying that there's lots of ways to pluck a duck, that different ways we could to uh, to create the effects we're going for here. I do like that about, you know, Photoshop in general, and then a lot of computer programs, some of my favorites, that let me, let all of us kind of create our own solutions to a problem. So it's always different. Okay, so let's say that's our wing. We'll rotate that back. Oof, got some extra stuff coming out from beneath the duck. But that's fine. And now I'm going to carve out some wings and see if this is going to work. I do feel like I want them to... I mean, part of me wants it to really taper to a very soft, thin, feathery wing. Another part is like... Who, who, how can anybody on Earth print that? There is a way to make that effect, though. Gosh dang it. Let's try it. Let's try it. What we do is we're going to turn our sphere. We're going to duplicate our sphere. Oh, we've already rotated the wing. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what happens. It's stretching because this duplicated wing still has the mask on it. So mask, clear. Uh, move tool. I don't know how clear it is what I'm doing. I'm just moving this circle in a way, bringing it closer and closer to the edge of the wing, and I'm gonna hollow that out. And so using that sphere as a stamp to taper the, the wing. <laughs> he still has a, he has a backup ball. I won't, I won't get rid of this ball. It was thinking about it. It could have overlapped more. It seemed to only overlap toward the edge there, but I don't hate it. Mia. Uh, move that up, uh, the, that sphere up just a little bit more. So now it's tapering a bit more. I'm going to smooth that out. Smooth tool, big brush, low power. It'd be real easy for this thing to just fall apart. Remesh it. Okay, let's see if I can cut out some feathers now. 
part of me originally wanted to just make one or two feathers and then just clone them again and again and again and again to assemble the wing and i'm like is that the way to go i don't know it feels like that's uh bonkers i will assemble a chicken <laughs> i'm gonna create one dna strand and then i'm gonna keep building my model up from that okay but because i'm a chicken drawing a duck i'm going to duplicate the wing and have a backup so if i don't like what I, how it's coming along i can i can mess with it later uh using the trim tool and the lasso let's uh I think what I want to do is cheat a little and use the painting tool. Which I can find if I if I look if I just take enough time I'll find it. Does it have any of the other colors I made? No. Um, let's use this green with a small brush. And I will eradicate the color later on. I'm not. I don't want this color on there. But I want to just basically give myself a guide to how I'm going to cut this thing. Actually, it's it's like having drawn this character so many times. It's sort of like there's a wing, and then there's another wing. First one goes all the way out. Sometimes it even protrudes out past the edge of the wing. You know, you'll see that when I'm drawing the character. That's sometimes how I draw it. Maybe I should do that here too. So I can add that. I would I would add that later on. I wouldn't mess with the figure at this moment. But let's keep that little bit of an arm in there. Okay, using that incredibly primitive bit of scribbling as a guide. The goal with this model is to make it a figure that can be printed, 3D printed, possibly by people with filament printers. Maybe, maybe. They might have to print them large. But definitely with resin printers, and then to turn them into D&D &D minis that will be available through a Kickstarter. And these are all characters from my webcomic. So let's we got 10 folks over on Twitch. I'm not seeing, I can't quite see the numbers on YouTube. But uh, hope everyone's having a lovely afternoon. I'm having fun here. Um, sweet. Okay, we got feathers so far. I can definitely paint some texture in on those. That doesn't seem right, that corner there. I'm going to trim out this a little bit more. I'm going to sample that background. I think that's just plain. And I'm going to erase by basically filling in the painting. So a little chunky in spots. It, it does come to a nice little tapered bit there. I kind of like that. Um, all right. Let's see. Let me put my, my terrible drawing back in. 
and using the mask tool, using the selection mask to start. You duplicate this wing and I'm going to extrude some feathers. I had the unmask option selected, which meant, um, why can I not select this wing? Uh, okay. Selection mask. And remesh this just to get us a little more depth, a little more, a lot more pixels to work with. They're not quite radiating out from where they need to be radiating out from, but I'm going to try to salvage it. Was a bit off. Okay, so that's one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude that and see what happens. Bring the extrusion thickness down a lot. Because the idea is I'm going to do one of these, pop it up, the layer behind it, pop it up a little further, layer behind that, pop it up even further. And then when it comes to the, the outer edge of the, or the, the, the arm of the wing, the, the, the bones of the wing, that that will be the thickest bit. It's still got to, the whole thing's got to be chunky because of, you know, model. But tell you what, let me do one more bit of, a little bit of extra there. Okay. Primitive. Got it. 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 That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm rotating. I'm actually rotating the device in my lap just to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate sets of wings. I'm going to do every other wing, bring that up, and then the other one every other wing and bring that up. Wing every other feather. Every other feather. Okay, okay. So where are we? Rotate it back in my lap so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Get rid of that mesh. Selecting that wing. Uh, go to the mesh selection mask tool and we're going to clear that. And then for the wing, we're going to paint all to hide out, hide everything I've done so far. Can I use the whole wing as a guide? I don't have to cut anything. The whole thing could be drawn and extruded. Ooh. And this is why I keep a backup. I wonder. Okay, okay. Selection mask tool. Rotate it in my lap because just to get the angle where I want it. Let me up the dag I gotta update really increase the resolution. We'll do every other wing. Using the selection mask tool, we'll zoom in with the lasso. I said it again, every other wing. I mean, every other feather. Um, Ooh, that's still very, very pixely. 
Uh, let's undo that. Remesh it one more time. Very high res. I'm really sorry, computer. You can do it. I believe in you. Let me try to do this again. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to decimate that just basically cut out data and then try to res it back up increase my resolution a, a bit more so cut out data add data back and then using the and then save because I'm a coward then go back to my selection tool and see if this is any smoother of a feather about the same tell you what I'm gonna draw on the wing just to give myself a guide this is like how I do the chainmail texture in my comic like I want to have guidelines that'll keep me from screwing up too badly so I'll choose a different color uh, let's do this blue bring the opacity down so hopefully this is just gonna be a really light drawing on here oh too light and so we have one set of wings that Again, I can't get too precious. This is going to be so small. I got to keep these wings, these feathers. <laughs> I don't have to say the wrong thing every time, do I? Okay, so that's one set of wings. I'm such a dope. Uh, and then the next one will... I think, so the first one radiates from the sort of the armpit of the duck. They have armpits. And uh, the second batch, I think radiate more from the elbow I think from what, what I've seen but I wanted to segue nicely to with one another even if I'm off anatomically off model let me do this let me undo 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 bring this one and make it not so deep why would I draw guides and then ignore them okay let's let's start like this I'm gonna do broad strokes first first set of wings second set of wings Not the most awful thing I've ever done. Okay. Oh, let's start there. Let's go to mask, selection mask, and let's clear what we have so far and create much larger feathers because this is supposed to be tiny and I'm getting into the weeds already.
Of course it went right through. Why wouldn't it? Oh, that's going to turn out really nice, I think. Rather unintentionally. Okay. All right. Step one. Uh, duplicate the wing. Hide the other one. Turn this one on. Let's create our next set of wings. Oh, feathers. Dang it. <laughs> Does it have to draw all the way through? Is there any option to turn off that it draws all the way through the dang thing? Like that it would stop? Or does it shoot all the way through like the carve tool does? Which I think it does, in which case I might have to delete a ton of pieces. It's all right. Live and loin. Or I can take the duplicates that it creates. Oh, I can save. I can. I can fix it. I can fix it. So many wings. <laughs> I can fix it by merging them together into a single object. And I don't mean that like. Uh, I don't mean like merging them as like a in a in a 3D sense, but by connecting them under the the scene, you know, behind the scenes with something like this. So now when it extrudes, it will be a single object. So when I break it into two pieces, it won't shatter into lots and lots and lots of pieces. Okay, so this is wing outside two. which I can extrude at a shallower depth. No, no, the, yeah, slightly shallower depth. Let's do that. And of course it's on both sides. Why wouldn't it be? Let me just double check something that it doesn't. Yeah, it seemed to create an extra little bit there. I didn't, I don't think I intended that. That must have been a holdover from the first. Okay, well, we can fix that. We'll separate. We'll delete. But now it's having the effect I wanted to have. Um, in that they're connected. Like that's a single piece, which is what I need to do with the other thing. And so I'm going to do, first of all, let me just clear off that. I want to keep these individual wing pieces uh, separate so I can reference them later on and if I need to make more changes I have access to them okay that's wing outside two close 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 wing outside one delete that mesh let's see that let's see wing outside one again which is gonna I'm gonna create using the selection mask tool I'm going to the masking tool set I'm going to make sure these things are all connected I want to do it at this stage? I kind of do. I kind of, kind of do. Unmask. Lasso. Oof. Oof. I do not. I do not want to do that at this stage. There's just not enough data. It's so chonky. That's fine. That's fine. What I liked is that what I like is that 
some places it's curving around the outside edge. Let me do let me make that intentional here. Selection mask, lasso. Oh, let's undo. By having the feather go up to the very edge where it curves, I don't want them to, I don't want them to meet each other. But by having it go up to where it curves, it's putting the lightest amount of lift on the edge of the wingtip. Feather tip. <laughs> oh, my brain. My stupid, stupid brain. Here's the unmasking tool to clean this up a little bit. Okay, okay. Sweet. Let's try that again. Uh, extract. Yeah, it's just curving ever so slightly toward the edge of the wing. Sweet. And we have two sets of these things, which may come in handy. Let's take a look at this. Let's... Separate. Outside feathers. 1A. No, that's gotta, I gotta be clearer than that. So, I have these meshes. I can always recreate them because I can always extrude them again. Hey, Cave Geek Art. Nice to see you. I'm doing a new 3D model of Waddle Bottom, the Lord of All Ducks. Or, I'm dying. I'm, I'm, you know, slightly dying trying. A lot of feathers. So, I'm going to try just rotating it slightly, slightly, slightly. Let me hide the top, top wing. Uh, let me paint over this stuff. Is there a way to clear the... Can I clear it? No, I'm just going to sample the color of the main figure. Can I say pull? There you go. Select that and then force paint and that select that and force paint. Okay. This is kinda not terrible. Kinda not. We're getting there. So the idea would be that I oh, not rotate. Scooch it down so that there's gonna be a distinction between the various feathers. The layers of feathers and I could do another set and I'll bring them out and bring another set out and bring another set out and that actually might work oh good I'm glad you got them I'm glad you got them I may really want to stamp the feathers on. Uh, maybe maybe I like having the the I like having the ability to kind of freestyle it um, oh I mean the feathers on the body yeah yeah that's quite possible uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to handle the body of the of the bird just yet. Cave Geek says, you might be making more work for yourself than necessary. There aren't that many feathers uh, in a wing. That's true. That's true. I, I, and not only that, given how small these minis are, I'm kind of beating myself up. 
Uh, I knew it going into it. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to draw these nice and big. And then I keep drawing them smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where they're going to be like follicles. Plus, I like when they're chunky, you know, looking at the reference. I mean, the, my quick sketch. Every time I draw the duck, there's not that many feathers. But every time I get into it, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to noodle a few more in there. So I got more to... Uh, so uh, it, right now, it's more like, okay, can I get the basic concept down, which was I created a sphere. I mapped the... extruded the basic wing shape off of the sphere. Now I'm going to I'm painting sort of the larger feathers onto the extruded basic shape and pulling them out. And so I'm kind of trying to create lots of pieces without creating lots of individual pieces. Um, why isn't that loading? Oh, it's a JPEG. For some reason, for some reason, the JPEG it was already at the end. Only at the end. Or unless is that truncated? Did it? Did it? Uh, did it economize that link? Oh no! All the circles are there. Right. Yeah. That's kind of no. I'm going for. I'm going for realistic adjacent. Uh. So, um, yeah, there's going to be more sketching for certain. Uh, and also, I'm fairly certain when he's fighting the dragon in book two, I'm very happy. There's like a couple of scenes where I was really happy with how Waddle Bottom's wings looked. When he's fighting the dragon in book two, pretty certain it's book two. Yeah, it's at the beginning of book two. That's right, he, he chases the dragon off. Isn't that right? Was that later on in the story? Is that in book three? That hasn't even come out yet? It, it is. It's in the beginning of book three. Um, so, and also in book one where he's leaving town and carrying Quimp. I think the wings there are very good. And that's more in line with the kind of photo you sent my, uh, along. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's closer to what it is. I've, I've never drawn the blue on his wings, even though he's clearly a mallard. Um, but um, yeah, I think I've got a lot to work with here. But I, I'm really happy with the general concept that the sphere. I was able on from this from the sphere. We hide some of these other pieces. Uh. We're in view mode. So from that sphere, I was able to paint that shape onto the side of it. And from that, I was able to extrude that basic wing shape. And now that I have that basic wing shape onto that, I can start stamping out uh, the feathers. But I do want to create them in individual pieces. And this is going to help me out greatly when I get to the, doing the helmet of Phosphonae, which I was having so much trouble with. Um, but... I'm very happy with the majestic look of Waddle Bottom. I'm very happy with the scale. I'm very happy with the crown. There's going to be things I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to rotate his body. Um, I might just move his whole head. I kind of should have... I, I, I don't want to cock it too much because, again, it's like Feathers McGraw in a grand... Well, no, no, a wrong trousers, not a grand day out. In, a, in uh, the wrong trousers, Wallace and Gromit, where I like the idea that he's got kind of those, those stiff... Again, what with the Batman Michael Keaton neck, where every time he turns, he's got to look like that. I want Waddle Bomb to have some of that. But overall, given that I started the day not knowing I was going to be doing this, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the sketch. I think we're going to wrap up pretty shortly. And let's take a look at, let me save where we're at. Uh, again, Thursday's stream will be probably cut short a little bit because... Uh, I've got to get up early the next day and go to um, uh, travel for free comic book day this weekend. Again, I'll be in Reisterstown, Maryland. Tomorrow night, check out the Pencil to Pencil podcast where I will be a guest 
uh, I think I'm maybe a semi-permanent guest host of that podcast. Uh, we'll see if they don't hate me um, or if I, you know, what the chemistry is like. Um, yeah, I'm so glad. Um, uh, I've, I've been popping in in the evening and watching you, uh, uh, Cave Geek. I've been watching you uh, uh, murder things, which is fun. Um, but this model came out, I think, really great. I'm glad we've got the stamp at the bottom. Increased the uh, contrast, the the, uh, the depth of the logo. Yeah, I think this is going to be really good. I'm excited for this to get made. Um, and I'm also really happy with the color in this model because this is exactly what I needed to kind of show on the Kickstarter. Um, oh, you have a new map you're working on. Uh, oh, that's great. I can't wait to see it. All right, so... Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, YouTube, I'm not sure if we had much of a crowd on YouTube tonight. That's uh, another telling thing for hopefully getting this affiliate thing cooking. But YouTube, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, my, for all I know, there's 50 people there, and, the, and the, the stream elements isn't telling me. But thank you for being here. I will see you all on Thursday. Again, it'll be a short one, but we'll start at 4, probably wrap up around 7. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday. And uh, Twitch folks, hang out for a moment. Let's see if there's uh, someplace we can raid. <laughs>